Hello, friends. So excited. We are here for the first non-binary book club live show of the year for January. And it is for She Who Became the Sun. This was our January book. I have my very special, special, special guest, Sandra of Got a Thing for Things, who is linked down below. Um, please subscribe, check her out. She is wonderful. So I love both of those book covers. Like I want the Illumicrate cover so bad. Yeah, I subscribed only to get the Illumicrate edition. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> Stop. Did you already read the book before you subscribed? No. You like, it was no, just I one of my most anticipated releases. Oh. Okay. And I knew exactly. it was gonna be like the monthly book. So I like signed up for the waitlist and I got it like exactly the one I wanted. Beautiful. So, Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Dude, I love that. Okay, so for the um for those in the chat, we're gonna we're gonna go over the like um the structure of this live. So basically, Sandra and I are going to talk about um, what we rated the book, our favorite quotes, our favorite characters. Um, there's something else that I like to talk about and I can't remember, I'm sure it'll come to me. But <laughs> and then you guys share your ratings, your star ratings in the chat. And kind of like halfway through the live, we tend to go for about an hour I will announce when it is Spoiler City. And then anyone who does not want to take the train to Spoiler Town will have to exit the conversation, right? Um, so, oh, Starla's in the house. Hello, I'm so glad that they made it. We got all these like, just celebrities. Jasmine, hello. <laughs> Kappa's in the house, hello. Joan, just stunning, wonderful celebs. We love to see it. Um, oh my gosh, yay! I love Joan. And it's true, Sandra is awesome. Absolutely. This is correct. So comment down below in the chat, those of you who have already read the book, what you rated it. We would love to know. Um, hey, hey, hey. Okay, so Sandra, my dear. Do I have to start? <laughs> You want me to start? I can totally start. I'll start. No, you start. You start. <laughs> okay. So um, we rated the book five out of five stars. Um, it's like, yeah, five out of five stars. Favorite character. Whew. Favorite character by far, by a landslide, I would die for him, is Young. Death. Dismemberment. Decay, all of that. <laughs> anything that he needed, anything that he needed. Like, I'm here. I'm. I don't I'm, know. I I had a feeling that would be y'all's favorite character. Favorite, favorite. One of my new favorite characters of all time. He is just like bowing down. Just take the last grain of food from my plate. Like anything. Mm, beautiful. So definite favorite. Um. Oh, I think favorite scene. That was the thing I I forgot. Um, so favorite scene, non-spoiler. So for me, um, favorite scene that isn't spoilery. It sucks because halfway through, not even halfway, um, I ran out of tabs. I don't know how that happened because I have like 10,000 tabs. I must have put them somewhere. I can't find them. So I'm going to like be trying to flip through rapidly to figure out what's where. It's so annoying because I'm very precise with my tabs. But um oh Sue's partner is Ma Ma something. Yeah. Ma. I wrote down names on my phone because I was like, I'm not gonna remember any names for the live. Uh wait. Uh it's Ma, me. it's Ma She Ying, but I don't like I don't know how Ying. to say it in Chinese. Yeah, but yeah. it's like you yeah. Ying. Ying. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ying. Yeah, uh, they call her Ma so much in the text that I, I forgot the second part of her name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's um, but so um, okay. So favorite non-spoilery scene. <laughs> so <laughs> many, there's so many scenes. I okay. So off the top. Oh, oh wait, no, that's a spoiler. Damn it, damn it. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm definitely going to talk to y'all about that scene later. Because on. you just say it like in a non-spoiler way. <laughs> the scene where 
one character goes to the camp of another character. Yeah. Like covertly. And then they are staring at each other. And the one character is like, I know you did not just walk up in my camp. Like, and yes. then the character like grabs the other one and like pushes them up against the wall and says something that is really rude. And I like, I laughed so hard at that scene where they were like, Oh, really? And then they said the thing. I laughed so hard that Akasha came running. Like, she ran into the room like, what's going on? Like, like because I was cackling that. That killed me. Um, so favorite character, Uyang. That scene in the camp was my favorite. Five out of five stars. Um, I think that's everything I'd like to go over um, right in the beginning. Okay. You feel comfortable? Okay. Yes, I'm ready. So, I had already read this. Like, I read it, I don't remember which month I read it, but, like, uh, this fall. And it was, like, mm -hmm. one of my most anticipated releases for all of 2021. So, I, like, expected to love it a lot. But I kind of felt a bit let down, even though I still really loved it. Uh, so, I was a bit, like, nervous to reread it. But now that I reread it, I think I love it, like, even more. Because now I appreciate right. everything so much better. Mm -hmm. So I ended up giving like 4.5 out of 5 stars. Because mm -hmm. it's still like not a 5 star read. But like mm -hmm. very, very close. Mm -hmm. um, and But like I think I just understood like all the political parts of it much better. Because the mm -hmm. first time I read it, I feel like everything went over my head. I was just like, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Kind of like that. But now I just like understood everything. So mm -hmm. I was just a bit stupid the first time I read it. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, but yeah. So yeah, it's like a lot of things going on. And it's written a bit like, I wouldn't say dance, but very like a lot of text sometimes with a lot of details. So mm -hmm. I was just like, oh. Uh, but yeah, favorite character. <laughs> I don't know. I think like the main character. Sue? <laughs> yeah, that I swear I remember the name of. <laughs> because I like how she just like, in the beginning, she just wants to live. And now she's just like, Nah, fuck it. I will. <laughs> I, I will. want everything. Yeah, I want everything. And I'm like, yeah, I'm into that. So I really like that development. Mm -hmm. And favorite scene? Can I be like nasty and say I like the yes. sex scene? <laughs> the like chapter 21, like the fisting scene? Yeah. That one? Mm -hmm. Because that was great. <laughs> I knew about the scene, obviously, because everyone is like, there's a fisting scene. And I was like into well into the book because it's kind of at the end of of part three. Yeah, and I was like, did I miss it? <laughs> Is it metaphorical fisting? Like, I was like, what? And then the next chapter, I was like, yeah. oh, <laughs> oh, but okay. it's it's written really, really well. So I like, I really liked it. <laughs> the detail. <laughs> yes, I was like. <laughs> I was like, oh, that kills me. That, and then like the dirty talk. At the, oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. I was so like, like uh -huh. I think okay. I missed it the first time I read it because when I reread re it now, it was like <laughs> reading it for. Yeah, it was like reading it for the first time. But I already read the book before. <laughs> Yo, I could be in my grave, and I still would have caught that. I was like. Oh. <laughs> that was like let's just say I know for a fact that that scene is responsible for so many gay awakenings yeah awake like one of the things though that I really liked about that scene ugh, not us getting nasty at nine minutes into the live yeah but we can be nasty it's fine <laughs> beautiful <laughs> um one like my, my favorite thing about that scene <gasps> What? I'm sorry, I want to put this comment up on the screen, but it's a spoiler, so I'm not. So for those of you who have read the book, look at the comment from Arena. <laughs> we'll talk We will talk about that later. <laughs> Moving on. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Anyway, the thing that I really liked about that scene was um like Shelly Parker Chan literally ooh, let me silence that shelly parker chan literally was like i'm going to 
dispel the myth about sapphic sex at that it's all just like gentle like we kiss and cuddle and light candles like she was like no we're doing this <laughs> yes. this is what it can be like this is what it's often like you know what i mean um so i was like oh i i had never seen that i had never seen such a a graphic yeah same like and i read a lot of like a, like a decent amount i guess of yeah. sapphic books but like, I never experienced that kind of scene before, which is why I like you enjoyed it yeah. so much. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd never seen that in a fantasy. Like even mm. like really kind of like rough, intense sapphic sex scenes in fantasies. Yeah. I've never seen that. I was like, let's go. This is beautiful. Wonderful. Like that's so cool. Um, excellent. Right. Yeah. Oops, I put the comment on the screen. Oh, okay. That scene came out of nowhere for me and I had to check other people's reviews to make sure I was right about what was going on. I'm dying. I'm dying. Um, oh no, I was listening to it on Audible and that scene caught me by surprise. You know, I'm so excited about getting to the audiobook because I know I want to reread it via audio. Oh, I was going to say, now I need to reread it. Mm-hmm. I know. So Coco's like my asexual ass barely noticing this. That's so funny. Uh, I don't talk about this often, but we're on the ace spectrum. And I think that's a part of the reason why we were like so intellectual about the scene, because we were like the representation and the 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 audacity of it, like the audacity of this Asian non-binary author um, on their debut being like, you're getting sapphic fisting. Yes. The nerve. Five out of five stars. <laughs> <laughs> for that scene alone. Yo, like for real. And it was like, because I agree with you when you were like 4.5. Normally, I would have given this book 4.5. But there were two things that made me be like, this can only be a five star for me personally. It was the audacity of the novel um, and the, the, the representation of spiritual connectivity between two bodies. Um, and the way that spirits were incorporated into the story. Um, it was, it's representation that I so rarely see done the way that it was. Yeah. yeah. And so for me, I was like, that's got, that, that can only be a five out of five star. Yeah. Um, like there was this, this is when I knew the book was going to be five out of five. It was um, when, where are you? Okay. So. It's this scene, it's early on, it's only on page 77, but Zhu says, as she stared at the eunuch standing there amidst his ghosts, she suddenly felt the half forgotten twang of a, of a string plucked deep within her, like connecting to like, a searing awareness of her difference from the person she was supposed to be shot through her. But even as she recoiled in rejection of that connection, she felt understanding flowing through it. Like knows like, and then goes on more um to talk about why she understands the eunuch even though they've only like locked eyes um and that meant so much to me as somebody who is deeply deeply spiritual um and comes from a deeply spiritual family and i rarely see that feeling because it is such a difficult thing to describe yeah um, that ability to connect with somebody because you are situated in a spiritual web that you yourself don't even understand like it just and that's throughout the book and i was like yeah, yeah, yeah. so good and also like and I, I can't speak on this being non-chinese and you know american but i'm 100 sure that that um is like connected to chinese spirituality and like things i i just can't yeah understand because i'm not familiar but that was my that was why i personally related to it the way that i did it did like, I think like it did a lot of things really beautifully mm. as well. Like, especially like, since it's not a kind of fantasy that is like, like it has action, but it's still slow paced mm -hmm. because we use a lot of time just like meeting characters and I don't know, being at war, but not really seeing as much war as you would think. Mm -hmm. But it like pulls you in with like so many, like, I don't know how to describe it, like different moments. Mm -hmm. So I think it does it really well. Yeah, I that's a really solid point because for that was actually the reason why the book, um, if it weren't for those two elements that we'd mentioned previously, 
would have been a 4.5 because in my opinion, the weakest part of the novel are the, is the military strategy and the fight scenes. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, those needed work. They weren't awful. Because, no, they weren't awful, but I was a bit confused what was happening in them. <laughs> a lot of them were yeah. but also like, the military strategy just felt weak in a lot of yeah. ways. Like, I was it like, was, at one point it was like, oh, we know they weren't attacking the summer because their horses are <laughs> was just like, <laughs> I was just like, so you just go a whole summer not doing shit? It was <laughs> yes, it was very simple. Yeah, like, so, it was yeah. like oh, they won't do this because of this one. Like planning yeah. wars is not that straightforward. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking like if they know they're not going to attack for like a whole summer, yes. why don't they like do stuff? Yeah, they're just like, what are you doing? Yeah, Get, like getting a sunburn down. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, it, it that yeah, I was <laughs> lacking. I was like, oh, okay, um. And like but it was, even, huh? No, it's just like, but it was not like as a big deal because the other parts were so great. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. That is ab- that is absolutely it. Br- uh, Bria Archive. By the way, do you, Bria, have a channel? Because it sounds like you do, and I definitely want to check that out. Um, <laughs> Bria Archive said it took me so long to read that page, the fisting page, because my jaw kept hitting the floor. LOL. That wasn't the only thing being hit. So actually, I had to read that scene at work, and I was sad about it. I'd be in the bathroom with the book, like, in the stall. Like... No, I can't, because, like, I work like a bingo, and the people there steal stuff, so I can't, like, leave. Oh, word. I'd be yeah. like, take everything. Take it all. That's none of my business. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you know? Um, Damn. Um... Stargazer Aaron, what a pretty name. I was surprised that I loved the book. I learned that I love books with a re with reimagined history with a fantasy twist and war tactics. I welcome any recommendations. Ooh, I think we Poppy War. One. Poppy War. Right. That's Poppy War. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, oh. Um, Upon a Burning Throne by Ashok K. Banker. Um, very under under celebrated and it's a retelling of uh, Maharaba I believe um is the is the name and it is very war tactical and just like really really good and walks that line between fantasy and war tactics so well um the wolf oh no 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 that's not it yeah I would go with those two oh um, even the unbroken ha- is based upon um real history. It's not like a retelling, but it is very much steeped in actual um if you look up interviews with CL Clark, they speak about about the ways that it was inspired by actual history. So The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, um Upon a Burning Throne by Ashok K. Baker, and The Unbroken by CL Clark. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that comment. It was just like <laughs> we in here. Do you have a TikTok? So my TikTok is bow ties and books. I am like five people from 6K, which is exciting. Do you have a TikTok, Sandra? I do, I know, but right? I only posted like two many months ago. Okay. I mean it's like as long as you have it, you always <laughs> keep up. You know what I mean? Like I didn't post for a while and then I posted and I started posting and I got like 2,000 followers in two days. It's so weird. TikTok is weird. I know. I don't it's get it. Weird. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm like, how? Why? Why are yeah, so I don't get it. here? I don't know. I'm almost resentful because I'm like, go to my YouTube. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know? But I am impressed by how many people have gotten into reading because of TikTok. And it's I think weird. that's amazing. It is. I think it's really amazing because I love more people that read. That's all I want in life. Oh my God, you're so yeah. Sweet. Imagine being this wholesome. <laughs> I'm just a Grinch over here, like, watch my channel. <laughs> and Sandra's like, this is great. Appreciating literature. Yes. Wonderful. The audiobook was amazing. Arena, do you know who read the audiobook? Just curious. Oh, 
Ooh, okay, so I guess I am gonna have to look at the audiobook because Light Lolliet says the audiobook is one of the best audiobooks I've ever listened to, hands down. Ooh, and audiobooks, like audiobooks are my favorite way to consume reading. Ooh, Noah H, it looks like I have to check out your channel too. I love this. It's someone called uh, Natalia Naudus. What else have they narrated? Anything? Um, like, um, the Bone Char Daughter series. Okay. Daughter of the Moon Goddess, One Last Stop by Casey McQuinston. Oh. And then The Heart Principle, R- Realm-, Realm Raker by Victoria Aveyard. The Chosen and the Beautiful by Neil Waugh. Many, many things. Dang, that's like a big. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I got The Chosen and the Beautiful mixed up with the. What is it called? The Tiger. What is the. The tiger that came down from the mountain? Oh, no, no, I'm getting it. Yeah, no. What is the one with the bunny that talks? <laughs> the Empress of Salt and Fortune, I'm sorry. Yeah, but it's the same author. It's the same author. It's the same, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they didn't read that book because that audiobook, that's where I'm going with this. The audiobook for Empress oh. of Salt and Fortune was so good. I don't know if I guess I didn't scroll far enough down. No, it's okay. No <laughs> yeah. worries. Um, definitely support debut authors not holding back gives us everything and more yeah oh thinking that this is debut I think like the writing is like really good like because many debuts are like written a bit like the writing is a bit but like there's so many mm-hmm. beautiful sentences I am horrible at fi- like keeping and finding quotes but I was like mm-hmm. li- literally like reading passages and I was just like shit and especially how like uh, our main character why do I keep forgetting the main character's name Zoo. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, like when she was thinking about like her body and like people like seeing, you know, seeing her body and like you know judging her for like how 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 who they think she is and all those packages. Like I can't exactly say I relate as much, but I was just thinking that it was written really well, and I can imagine other people like really being like, "Oh my god," you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. I just found some examples that I highlighted showing off the amazing writing. Um, The pain was like being crowned with burning stars. I loved that line. Like when she is getting her, um, this is not a spoiler, but when she is getting her monk scars. um, Yeah. So cool. And then it goes on to say, as the pain went on, it changed and became transporting. She felt as if she were hovering in an emptiness in the center of the world, her body's every quiver of life coming to her from across some vast distance. Yeah, like, it's beautiful. Beautiful! Wait, do, you, do you have the art? I do. Yeah, I'm jealous. Can you send it to me? Of course. Okay. <laughs> but either way, but I was going to say, I don't know if you all know this, but every edition of the book has a different first sentence. What? Yeah. <laughs> so every like edition has a different first sentence. The author did this on purpose. So like if you have like different editions, they all have like a different first sentence. And I think that's really cool. Oh my god. So I don't know what yours starts with. I'll tell you. Songli village lay flattened under the sun like a defeated dog that has given up on finding shade. Yeah, okay. So that's like the normal, like this is the normal US hardcover. So that's like, it started like with that hair. But here in like the UK, I don't know if it's different from the normal UK. It starts with, oh God, historical notes. Not that. (laughs) Uh, It starts with... uh, uh, what? How do I say this name of a village? Shongli village lay flattened under the sun. All around there was nothing but the bare yellow earth cracked into the pattern of a turtle shell and the sere bone smell of hot dust. Oh, because I think that's the second line. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. That's the second line of the book. But they're like, it's... That's interesting. That? Yeah, I will save. Um, I'll save my arc for you and <laughs> I will... I'll, like... When I, I'll do a reread, I know, and I'll put some more like annotations in it, and I'll save it for you for when we meet up, or so just send it. Now I'm like, but they are they really different? Did I just lie? They are not different after all. Because That's they're not lying. Different. Yeah, but like it was the same sentence. So did I lie? No the the second sentence is different. No, 
why are why are we being scientists about this? It's I don't know. <laughs> it's like I don't know why we're stressing about this. I don't know, but like it, it looks it looks a bit different. It's like it's like it's the same sentence, but it's con constructed differently. Oh, so, where? yeah, I kind of. But like they did that on purpose, and I think that's cool. Like mm -hmm. that different editions has different first sentences. It yeah. is. It is. I mean, and that makes sense too. Like I wish publishers did that more often. Yeah. Have the special editions actually have slightly different content in some way? Because yeah, other than the cover. Plan to Code asks, do you read on stream? I haven't seen that yet. I'm about to be doing reading sprints in February for Blackathon. So yes, you're going to see sprints on my channel and then the channel of like the other Blackathon hosts. So um, I am in the process of making a calendar for all of the host sprints. So make sure you're following the Twitter Blackathon 1. That's where all the things are going to be announced or on my channel. But I'm like so excited. I made my TBR. Is it is it up yet? I don't think so, right? No, I haven't filmed okay. it, but I can cool. show you cool. afterwards. <laughs> cool. I just want to make sure I haven't missed it because I uh -huh. hate missing your content. I just watched your book haul. It was so good. Like I loved how chill it was. It was so good. So <laughs> Light Lolly, it says sending you can't say with us energy to those that don't give it a five. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's not my fault you didn't understand the assignment. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. It's all good. Um, yes. So Kristen says, I loved that line. The connections between Uyang and Zhu really structures the book. Exactly. Exactly. So, so like, the first time I read it, I missed the whole connection. <laughs> I'm dying. I don't know what I was doing the first time I read it, okay? Apparently, <laughs> I was not keeping up. But the second time, I, like, really noticed it. Like, the connection between them. So I like appreciate it much more, mm -hmm. but I I have really no idea what I was doing the first time I read it. Mm -hmm. No, but, <laughs> but it makes yeah. sense though. Unless yeah. like I think unless you are a really um, how do I put this? I think that those of us who are really really spiritual like mm. clicked on those themes, but we're not used to especially. Um, in like, I can only really speak for Americans, like American Westerners. Like we don't see that a lot in our literature, that mm. in-depth digging into spirituality. So it makes sense why, like, not that you're a Westerner, but you know what I'm saying? It just makes sense that yeah. it wouldn't be like, I mean, immediately apparent. I'm kind of a Westerner because I live in Norway. <laughs> Wait, where were you born? I was born in China, but I was adopted by white parents. I live in Norway with white family. Word. Okay. Because I, yeah. I, like, so, like, I remember you yeah. moved somewhere on your... No, I trip. was living in Japan for like my exchange year for like That's one year. That's what it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Okay. Word. Yeah. Confusing. Gotcha. No, it's all good. We all, you know, we all have our journeys. Um, I appreciated how Zoo's mind and feeling were explored in moments of intimacy. It took it to another level. Yes. Yes. Like her hesitancy, her the difficult relationship she has with being touched yeah, um, and how she like has to fight not to tense because of her internalizing views of the female body and also like her own shame for her body and all of that. Yeah. Like oh, like the debating scene in the beginning, like when she was had to bathe, I was so stressed out. Yes. <laughs> like that was stressed me out so much but then it all got fixed and I was like thank you we need to talk about and correct me if I'm saying his name incorrectly but Zuda I don't think that's how Shuda yeah X-U-D-A yeah the yeah. best friend brother. the best friend and yeah. how he protected her so yes. much throughout the book yes yes I was shook okay so we're 29 minutes in and I feel like it's safe for us to enter spoiler town yeah you know um and since we're on the topic so okay so at like officially we're going to be jumping into spoilers so exit the chat if you do not want to be spoiled speaking slowly to give you guys time to accept your fates um so not two more people immediately jumping on okay so <laughs> we just jumped on we are about to get the spoilers for the book. So if you do not want spoilers for She Who Became a Son. <laughs> Leave now. Sorry, that was gross. Oh my god, three more people just joined. 
<laughs> Starlight's like, bye. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> okay, so the scene, this killed me. The scene where um, he reveals that he's known the whole time that Zoo yeah. is, a, is a woman. Uh, and he says, little brother, we shared a bed for six years. Maybe the other monks have no idea what a woman's body is like, but I do. You never said anything, Zhu said wonderingly. She felt a piercing nostalgia for all those times he must have protected her while she had chosen not to realize. He shrugged. What difference does it make to me? You're my brother, whatever is under your clothes. Yes, yes. It's like when I read that, I was like, <laughs> so... <laughs> It was so good. So good. Oh, <laughs> That's why he's like almost my favorite character, I think. Yeah. Because he was just such a good supporting character in the story. Mm-hmm. And then like when they meet like many years later, when they're like fighting, I was like, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. But what did you think about like our main character suit taking her brother's destiny? Because it's really like she's trying to be him. And like mm-hmm. thinking that if she pretends she's him, she would be like great. But then she realizes she's great on her own. But mm-hmm. I really liked like how that like kept her going throughout the whole book. For mm-hmm. it was really interesting, like the whole theme of uh, destiny. Mm-hmm. Like, is yeah. destiny real or is it just like something they believe in? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, um, <clears throat> I personally felt like, and again, I, I, I need to read some interviews with Shelley Parker Chan to see if, the, you know, how much they go into their own opinions of destiny. But for me, as someone who does have reincarnation in our family and whose family does believe in destiny, um, the way that I looked at it was that we do, like, Zoo was Zoo chose to step into the destiny of another and to adopt it because that was something that she could seize and she decided to seize it. But the thing about destiny is that even with prophecies and predeterminations, there's still always choices and various ways to interpret destiny. Um, And it's all about interpretation like for example later on in the book when because the the, okay so for example early on she's told that her destiny is to be nothing um, yeah and that in order to achieve greatness she has to become a boy um and that she's destined to die (laughs) and then she she literally comes back to life because once yeah once um what is what is his name zoo zoo chagan is that his name no it's not yeah, but uh, when you say she was destined to die, she does in a way die though because she becomes like this new person. So like that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. she reincarnates in a way. She dies, yeah, yeah. but then once her male self, the the destiny that she has stolen, is killed by having his hand cut off, she then seizes. She goes. I don't know what name she's going to go by now. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, but she's she's made it clear that she's abandoning living as a boy. Yeah. Um, and so the destiny that she was given was to be nothing, but she's already thwarted that destiny by, by forging a path of her own. Like she gave herself yeah. the mandate of heaven through the sheer force of her will. Yes. Um, and so I think that while destiny is preordained, it can be cheated, it can be played with, it can be stretched, um, and it can also be created. Yes. I think like the, I don't know if I'm lagging. Oh, I lied a bit. I think the book did a really good job of like, having destiny there but like using it in a really good way Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely so judith says i also liked that she could see the creepy ghosts that was dope that was honestly dope yeah i speaking of the ghosts sandra did you catch because this didn't hit me until the end of the book did you catch that homeboy um chen by the way i love chen Chen. Yeah, who was that? <laughs> no, 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 not Chen. I'm so sorry. Uh, what is his name? The brother 
of Essen, the adopted brother of Essen. Part oh, yeah. Did uh, you catch? So he like, he's the one for any of you in the chat who are like, what's going on? The adopted brother of Essen. He's the one yeah. who's blamed for the murder of Essen's father. Yes. He is stripped of his land, you know, everything pretty much but his titles. He's the strategist. Um, his father like never respected him because he's an academic and not a warrior. Him, and he's like seen as kind of a villain, villainous character throughout the book. He develops the ability to see ghosts. And oh, he I don't does. remember that. Yeah, because he starts to see, he like talks to Uyang and he's like, I can see what's haunting you. And that's how he knows. <gasps> and you know what that means? What? It means that he has the potential to wield the mandate of heaven because only people who can see the ghosts can are given the mandate of heaven. And so like, because Zhu could see the ghosts, that was the only reason why she was able to seize the mandate. And yeah. So even though at the end, you know, at the end of the book, she, you know, she kills the other person who has the mandate. Yeah, she queens, kills the prince. <gasps> what did you think about that, by the way? That she killed the prince. <laughs> I was like... It was like a child, you know, so... I could not. I was like... Ooh. But at the same time, I was like, she's already stepped into moral gray, like, on the path yeah. to villainhood. So I was surprised, but I was like okay, like, game's on. Like, she's, yeah. she's shown her face. Um, but I feel like in fantasy, it's, like, really normal to follow the hero. And we think we are following the hero, you know, because she, like, was born really poor and then she, like, grew. But then she's kind of also villainous. And I really like that. Like, yes. she has different sides. So. Yes. She yeah. is, honestly. She, the more that the book goes on, I was so much more reminded of Rin. Honestly. Yeah, I was the same, the same. Big Rin vibes. Big Rin vibes. And we um, approve of Rin vibes. Yeah, I'm I'm a huge, <laughs> huge fan of Rin. I'm one of my favorite characters of all time. Um I'm trying to find because I'm kind I'm catching up on the, the chat. Everyone's like raving about Suda because he's amazing. Um what did you think, though? Were you, like, surprised by it? That she killed him? Uh, yes. And I had read a book before, but I had forgotten. Sure, yeah. And sometimes when we're at the end of a book, we're just like, okay, let's, like, read, let's get to the end so we can sit and reflect. Yeah. And so because we're reading the end fast, like, that. Like, I literally feel like I didn't read it the first time. The only things I remembered, like, from my first read is, like, when she is in at the monastery, because that's actually my favorite part of the book. Mm -hmm. When she's like in the monastery and like, mm -hmm. is that what it's called? Monastery? Mon Monas I say monastery, Mon but is that correct? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean. You know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. And she's there. Uh, that's like my favorite part of her book because it's like really slow paced. And like, I love mm -hmm. like just like adolescence kind of. Yes. Uh, and I remember yeah. that part. And I remember the part where she lost her hand. Um, we said the tenth later. And that's all I remembered. <laughs> that was so jacked up yeah so and then she later she's like oh but it's fine so okay so for so now i can talk about it with this i know that killed me she's like eh, it'll be i right. i was like oh, <laughs> not a hand but now i can talk about that scene that made me so freaking happy was there's a scene where she goes into uyang's camp just yeah, yeah yeah after he cuts her hand off she's like okay i'm gonna go back and talk to him and i'm like yeah, she's you know? like, I need this help. And I was like. Right. Like, I was like, okay. <laughs> you, so then he says, so while he's got her pinned to the wall, this killed me. The very first thing that he says to her, um, right after he gets over his shock that this person just meandered into his camp. Um, oh, my gosh. Where is this scene? I was dying. I don't know because uh, I have a, I don't use like uh, what's it called tabs. I feel like I'm so close to finding it. I'm so mad that I ran out of tabs. Um, okay. <clears throat> so for a moment, they just stood. The next, she was pinned against the tent wall with General Uyang's studded leather wrist guard crushing her throat. She choked and kicked. Despite his 
small size, she might as well have tried to free herself from a statue's grip. The scratchy tent fabric bowed outwards under their combined weight. He leaned in and whispered in her ear, wasn't losing one hand enough? <laughs> I was Do like, you like <laughs> I feel like you all like shaped them more than <laughs> Yo, with Ma. oh yeah, I do not care about her relationship with Ma. I don't care <laughs> except at all. the fisting. The fisting is great. Yeah, I care about the fisting, but like <laughs> I don't feel the chemistry. I'm not saying the chemistry is not there, but I just don't ship yeah. them. And I also I don't. Huh? No, it's like I feel like she had more chemistry with Oh Young. Yeah, because she, they yeah. have like literally a spiritual connection. But yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and that's where that chemistry comes from. But I think for me, I do ship them, but I don't ship them necessarily romantically. I ship them quasi romantically, kind of in the way that Rin and Naja are. Like they very clearly like have feelings for each other, but like they can never be because of all that's happened between them. And, but so that kind of like ill-fated connection tension I really ship yeah. um this quote was really cool to me the nothing was the identity she left behind then she made her brother's destiny come true and left that behind as well to create the destiny she wants now that she has been reborn yeah so in exactly. in in like theory all the destinies like that was predicted came true exactly and then it's not the like you would assume yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like you know? what like I love myself like a prophecy, and then like it's not as what you think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. This comment, Monet says, I think that Ma's crossroads into a moral gray area was so important in the book. We understood the motivation of Zhu and Uyang, but Ma isn't driven by revenge or a wish for power. Yeah. That is so I true. Wait, I sorry. have another question. What did you think about Uyang always being like compared to like a woman? because of his body there was something there right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I think honestly one of the biggest thing like that hit me with Uyang the way with the way people treated him because even he himself does not call himself a man he like says yeah. in the book he's like I'm not a man I'm neither I'm and it doesn't yeah. he doesn't say it in a like a like a I feel neutral way it's I don't deserve, right? I'm yeah. I'm unable to be a man because I don't have this appendage. And for him, like he believes that in his like to his core. Yeah. Um, and personally, what I really liked about that is that there are so many ways to be non-binary to arrive at that place. Mm -hmm. And what doesn't get discussed a lot of times um, among folk who are either white and non-binary or Western and non-binary is that a lot of times non-binary identities for BIPOC folk are informed deeply by their culture and spiritual beliefs um, and by like the, yeah, basically cultural. And so like the reason that he doesn't consider himself a man is deeply rooted in his culture and what manhood mm. means for his culture and how he doesn't qualify. Not because he feels neither or, or like he feels neutral, mm. you know? Um, and that's one of the things that I really loved about this book was it shows characters, because you can even put Zoo in this, in this category of gender nonconformity, gender defiance and- fluidity. Yeah, 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 um, definitely. Yeah, and it's because of their cultures, right? Mm. It's not like their hearts, it's, it's their culture. And I, one of the things that really frustrates me as somebody who is non-binary specifically because of my spirituality, um, specifically because of my Afro-Latinx spirituality and my familial beliefs, that means a lot to me because I get very frustrated with how white and Western the typical understandings of non-binary is. Um, a really good example of this is how two-spirit people are consistently pushed out of the non-binary community um, or rather we say like we as westerners we as non-indigenous non-native peoples say that we like acknowledge two-spirit people for example but when we're talking about non-binary hood as a whole we always leave spirituality out of it right mm. always. it's always about like 
body and like gender dysphoria and things that are not that those things cannot be spiritual. I'm not saying that, but you see what I'm saying? It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. religion and spirituality are always, always, always separated out of non-binary because what non-binary is accepted to mean in the West is inherently divorced from those concepts, mm. you know? And so yeah, yeah. that's one of the things that I loved about Yang is that like, he's a non-binary character. Um, yeah. Loved it. Yeah, I was thinking to say because I also thought it was really different. And mm -hmm. it was also like about how his like face was really pretty, has really nice skin. Mm -hmm. So I was yes. just like, I thought it was really interesting to read. Like, and then ultimately the characters around him was like, no, like he's not, you know, a man. Yeah. And I was just thought it was really interesting because like other books I read is like not like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, even like, um, well, I'm thankful to, I feel like I have a decent amount of non-binary books that aren't like that. Mm. Um, I have like four or five like favorite books that I can, that are non-binary that whatever. But the, like, like kind of like you were saying, like the hypes non-binary books are not that. You no, know what no, I mean? No. That's not, mm. the, that's not the representation that we get. The depiction mm. rather. Yeah. Um, also, speaking of Ouyang. Can we, <laughs> just real quick, um, can we talk about how Ouyang is clearly a submissive? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like all of them, all of, did y'all catch, like y'all in the chat, y'all watching, did you catch how many times he was like forced to kneel or like asked to kneel or found himself wanting to kneel before Essen and like very yeah. excited about it? Like, but didn't him and Asa like do it? Because they I, didn't. Yeah, they got I I needed that scene. You know, I needed that scene. Look, <laughs> look, look! I love a slow burn. Okay, this fire burning too damn slow. Okay, we need to. Yeah, but to he killed him in the end, so now we're never getting that scene. Look, oh, I forgot that he died. couldn't kiss him on the lips as he was dying nothing like nothing no because he was the son of the father who killed his family so yeah he was just banging for revenge literally even how he killed him was gay as fuck him like slowly <laughs> inserting his sword yes. into his chest i'm like we get it we see the symbolism here honey we see it we yeah. all see it but because i think uh he was really resentful of like you know having to be with him but i think also part of him liked it <laughs> oh yeah for sure for sure and I think that was too a part of his shame was like he was very like attracted to the fact that he was in a servile position to this yeah. one that killed all of his family uh, well not killed but is the descendant of the guy who killed his entire family yeah um I completely agree with Kappa Books. They said, I think Uyang Essen was more compelling because there was a lot of stuff going on there. But Zuma has the possibility because, like, the clashing morals. Yeah. I don't know if you saw this, but the author posted, like, something on Twitter being, like, sorry for the Zuma fans. So it seems like something terrible is going to happen there. Um... So yeah, I think maybe it's the moral thing. But it seemed like in the end that Ma like accepted the morally stuff because she goes on one knee and says, I'm going to be your empress. So I felt like she accepted it, but we will see. Yeah, I didn't entirely... I don't entirely trust Ma. Not saying that she's a not trustworthy character, but I don't trust that she is going to be able to do what she wants which is to just blindly support Zoo. I yeah, think yeah, yeah. her nature, you know? I think she's yeah, going to yeah, try, yeah. but I don't think she's going to be able to. Oh my God, the scene when Sue just took her oh. hand on her boob. That scene, <laughs> I was like, and I got all excited because I was like, is this the fisting scene? Is this? And when it didn't happen, I was like, was it? That's when I was like, is the fisting invisible? Like, was it, was it? Someone said in the chat, oh my gosh, someone said in the chat yeah. earlier, they were like, I thought she, I thought she was going to fist her with her stump. And honestly, I did too. Like I assumed after her hand got cut off, I was like, that's. I mean, I think that could work. Like when you are healed, 
it seems like you know smoother to just but I... let me stop let me not go there we not go there. no i want to hear say so we're already like, nasty god not this video getting demonetized like a part of the i'm gonna tell you privately because it's too i can't i cannot i cannot get talk about this on camera I just feel like the fingers are a necessary part. <laughs> I'm dying. Me that experience, because it's like oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> like this motion is important. Screaming. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm screaming. Damn, this comment. Essen? Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, he he did. Um, for some reason, I just don't feel like Essen's going to stay dead. They had two... I don't know. I think... I I don't think Oh Young and Essen was a good match just because mm. like, they were, like he was in a power position, you know, Essen, the whole time. And then... Um, you know, he wanted to murder him. <laughs> I wanted to murder him the whole time. So I don't think it would have worked out. That's fair. I'm crying. Mostly. But I think I need to, like, we need some fan fiction of, like, them. Give us the fan fiction, sweetie. I'll write so, it. Back. Someone in the chat, like, have fan fiction. Hell yeah. Because I need. Hell yeah. Okay, I completely agree. All the scenes between Essen and Yang are so sexually charged. So, so, so sexually charged. I, I love, like, like the whole book is, like, yeah, you know, uh, what's it called? Marketed as, like, a sapphic fantasy, and we are just, like, Yang and Essen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really funny. I just love how this whole chat is just, like, Yang Zhu ship. Yeah. You know? Um... Yeah, I was very upset though that we didn't get any any action between them. Essen and Uyang, I mean. So sad. So I feel like Uyang wouldn't allow a relationship to blossom because he was tied to his destiny for revenge. His shame and self-hatred was deep. This is as much as I like was rooting for Essen and Uyang, I completely agree with this. Like, his whole family died. He's not gonna. He's haunted yeah. by ghosts every second. He's not going to give that up for love. Yeah. Um, and again, I feel like this is a thing that a lot of Western readers will struggle with um, because of the, again, like cultural shifts, right? Like I feel like a lot of Americans specifically would be like, yeah, I can forgive. I can forgive the loss of this family um in order to forge something new romantically um but i really liked that he chose his his blood debt right like that mm. was the thing that drove his whole character so i felt that it would have been atypical for his character an abandonment mm. of that character to give it up for romance yeah but i feel like he didn't really like love that son i feel like really no maybe i missed it <laughs> No, no. Maybe I missed it. I didn't see it. Where's my microscope? I didn't see it. <laughs> what about y'all in the chat? Do you think that they that um Uyang No, because I said seemed like an ass as well. He was just like he always had like boy toys. So I feel like he was just one of his boy toys. No. I said he's never been with a boy. No, like as son, they they said to him like he had many different boys, different months, and that Oh Young was just one of them. I didn't interpret it as like a sexual thing. Was it a sexual thing? Wait, what? What are we talking about now? <laughs> that scene where they're like, "Yeah, he's just the latest collection in." Yeah, I thought it was a sexual thing, <laughs> but I I might be wrong because I just interpreted it as like. Not sexual, but like, yeah, he just collects people for loyalty and then discards them. No, I thought it was like he banged them. <laughs> I can't. I mean, does anyone in the chat know? Because clearly we don't. Were they banging? I thought they were banging. Wait, who? Do you mean Asen and Ouyang or do you mean Asen and other people? Other people, other boys. 
I thought he was banging lots of other boys because they commented on it like twice. Like, I think his brother said something and his father said something. His father was like, oh, it's another one of your blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Monet is just over here dropping wisdom. Western culture has eroded all type of tribal communal ties and modern society is leaning towards eroding familial ties too. So I agree. They may not agree with not allowing oneself to feel or joy. Word. Huh. Someone said, I also thought it was sexual, lol. But someone else said, okay, I missed that. Yeah. We'll, we'll maybe post a poll on Twitter or something <laughs> after this. Tag like, the author and ask. For Did real, I have sex with other boys? <laughs> we need to yeah. know. Oh, so Rebecca says, I also thought it was sexual. Yeah. Do, does anyone have that scene bookmarked? Because I want to like highlight it. And I, don't, it I don't bookmark things. I am useless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm done with you. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> I'm useless. Okay, Wu Yang. <laughs> Someone else said, I also thought it was a sexual thing with all the boys. So that's what I mean, that Essen just had him as one of his toys. Maybe he cared for him more, yes, but at the same time, he did just like have lots of boy toys. God damn. Okay. So, I'm shook. I think Lee Young put Essen on a pedestal rather than really love him. I thought Essen never truly saw Lee Young, and that hurt Lee Young too much. Wow. Yes. Yes. Wow. Because Lee Young was always jealous of the numerous women around Essen, he never felt any type of way about any boys around Essen. That's true. But oh, Essen had a wife. He like went and banged her. Yeah. And then Lee Young was like, "Why is he with his wife?" <laughs> That, that was always so funny. His just utter disgust. Here, let me go grab the the next book. I'd be right back. Oh, I thought you meant the next book in She Who Became My Son. Do you have that? Can you send it to me? <laughs> oh. He had four wives, someone wrote. He had four wives. Four wives. But he couldn't give any of them a baby, so like maybe no. he wasn't finishing the act maybe, with them. Maybe he wasn't a true man. No, joking. Sorry. <laughs> well, that was kind of what I thought was like, maybe he was in, in, um, he like, uh, what is the word for when you're, um, like when it doesn't, it's not, it's like sterile. Is that the word? So maybe that was, it, so I see what you're saying, like within the eye of society, if that had gotten Yeah, yeah out, that's what I meant, yeah. Yeah, his manhood like would have been stripped. Yeah. But maybe it wasn't that. Maybe he just like could not complete the sexual act because he was gay. <laughs> <laughs> so Monet, the, in answering your question, the February book is Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly. I'm very excited about this because um, I believe it's this character. Um, is non-binary it's a non-binary romance um which is very exciting and it's a story about these two individuals one's like a social media whatever like has really good following and they get paired up on a baking competition and they start falling for each other and it's supposed to be really funny and really good like i've not heard one person give us a bad review and you know that I don't like romance. So this is the February You book. like romance only if it's with me. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like I ship you and me and that's literally it. So. Oh. Okay. Someone said that Essen had daughters. They couldn't conceive a son. Oh. Yeah. He did. I, I missed that. They had children. So he did manage to finish. He did. He did. <laughs> yep. I thought that... I thought what Liang was upset that Essen didn't see himself was the gay thirst. Huh? I thought okay. what Liang was upset about was that Essen didn't see. Oh, so I think this person is saying that Liang was upset that Essen didn't see how gay Essen was. That's yeah. my interpretation of this. But maybe it was like a hard time for them to realize they were gay because, you know, um, like, he was allowed to have male lovers, but, like, you're supposed to be with, like, 
maybe like women or like people people with wombs to mm-hmm. get children. Sure, sure. Yeah, but not like officially. I think like you can officially have like a man as your like what's it called consort. Right. I think. Yes. Maybe. I hear that. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I love how Rebecca's like, nah, he knew Uyang wanted him. <laughs> um, Noah asks, do you ever pick graphic novels or comics for the book club? I, we had, um, we have, yes, the answer is yes. Um, so, and if you're like really wanting to see one, um, we vote on our book club picks in the stories of NB book club. Voting is going to happen in February for the April, May, and June books. So I'll make sure there's at least one graphic novel up there and make sure you're tracking the stories because then you can vote. Um, ooh, I didn't know there was another cover of Love and Other Disasters. Sorry, I can't sentence anymore. No, it's all good. It is completely mm-hmm. good. Um, Essen probably also wanted to young but wouldn't allow himself to go there due to expectations. I got that vibe yeah. too. But I they, they, they did have each other. <laughs> Sorry. Because it was like, for me, the reason why I thought it was mutual was because Essen kept talking about how Uyang looks like a woman. And I think for him, that was the only way he could accept his own attraction to Yeah, Uyang, probably, probably. Right? Is if he demasculized him. I was 100% sure he fucked other boys. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I love how you are riding this train. Like, you were the conductor. <laughs> you were like, yes. nah, no. <gasps> <laughs> like he had a harem <laughs> y'all can just get like an interview with the author and then you can ask for me did Asan have sex with other boys did they I want to know no, maybe not as aggressive but like calmly ask yes oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I'm gonna look for that 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 excerpt and um yeah post it on twitter <sighs> this so, conversation was really good yeah <laughs> is there what anything else you want to say like uh, since we're like in an hour, I feel like it has like great parts, but it, it's mostly fun to talk about the like fun parts. Like yeah, yeah. No, I'm like surprised at how much ground we covered in an hour, to be honest. Yeah, but I feel like it's the kind of book you can like talk about for a really long time because it had so many elements. Yeah. So like it's kind of impossible to talk about everything. Mm-hmm. Someone said also earlier that it's the kind of book that like. You can read over and over and get something mm-hmm. new out of it every time. And I personally experience that now. So I think the next time I'm going to audiobook it and then I will probably Same. love it even more. Same. I'm, so, especially yeah. after all of these raving reviews. Yeah, definitely going to audiobook it. Um, I liked this comment. One of my favorite scenes in the book was Zhu telling the previous governor's wife, Lady Rui, Rui to take over the city. Yeah, that yeah. was great. That scene was amazing. Yeah. Calmly ask the author all the most important questions. I'm screaming. <laughs> In regards to the um, was Essen sleeping with boys? Uh, is she using her fist? You can ask that. I know that was the second question. Is like so. <laughs> so um, okay. So I think we're gonna end the live here. This is literally like my favorite live. I think that we've done. For Andy is it your favorite book for a non-binary book club? No, because <laughs> of like AMSD's books exist. You know? Oh, that's true. Yeah, I can't. So, okay. But like after a quick AMSD. <laughs> no, I think I think Iron Widow. I haven't read that yet. Oh, you're going to love it. I mean, it was like a summer pick and it was. Wow. Also, oh, also, um, I don't know if Monet is still here, but we are also going to be our live show for We Are Not Broken by George M. Johnson. That was our November book and the live show never happened. So next month in February, we will have a live show for We Are Not Broken. So if you want to read the book in time for the live, you totally can. The audiobook is only four hours long. It's a small book. So it's another thing. I haven't um, read that. So I'm really excited. I'm very, very, very excited for that discussion. Um, so Sandra's information is in the description box. Please subscribe to this wonderful, intelligent beauty who we love so much. 
Um, thank you so much for coming to the live. Don't thank you for having me. Yes. Oh my God. We have to do sprints more often. Like, I'm so like I'm honored and shy. I'm like fangirling at the same time. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad that you said yes because I've wanted to like share a virtual space with you for so long. So I'm really glad that you agreed. Um. So, uh, the February book, Love and Other Disasters. Follow NB Book Club on Instagram for updates, and we'll talk later. Bye. Bye.